Okay, welcome to section 2.5. We're going to focus our attention on quadratic functions here. We're going to look at the graphs of quadratic functions. Uh, but the definition is a quadratic function is any function that can be written in this form, where the leading coefficient, the coefficient of x squared can't be zero. Otherwise it would be a linear function, right? Anyway, uh, you shouldn't be too surprised if I told you every quadratic function can be written as a transformation of x squared. So if you look at this example, if it's written in this form, you, and you use our trans transformation se sequencing, you can see you could, you could re replace x with x minus 1, that's a horizontal shift, one to the right. Multiply y by 2, that's a vertical stretch. And then you subtract 4 from y, that's a vertical shift. So what, what happens to the vertex? It becomes the point 1, negative 4, doesn't it? So when it's written in this form, it's easy to tell what the vertex is, isn't it? Let's see, well, not only are we going to find the vertex, let's find the y and x-intercepts and look at the graph. The y-intercept is just going to be g of 0. Plug in 0 for x, and you find out that the y-coordinate is negative 2, isn't it? The x-intercept can be where most of the work is. However, if it's written in this form, it would be easier to solve this equation uh, equal 0 uh, for x when it's written in this form instead of multiplying it out and using the quadratic formula. All you'd have to do in, in this form is just um, add 4, divide by 2, take the square root, don't forget to put plus or minus, and add 1 to both sides. So the x-intercepts are 1 plus or minus square root of 2 comma 0. If you put all that together, the graph of this quadratic function has vertex 1 negative 4, y-intercept negative 2, and the x-intercepts would be at 1 plus or minus square root of 2, 0. Boy, it sure is nice when the quadratic function is written in that form. What if it's not written in that form? What if you have, what if you have a quadratic function like, like this, and it's not written in, in terms of the trans, transformation of x squared? The answer is, you write it in that form. How do you do it? Well, you have to complete the square. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor out the... Co this, is, this is the process that will work. We just look at the first two terms and we factor out the coefficient of x squared. So you factor out the negative 2 from the first two terms. Then what you do is inside the parentheses you complete the square. So what's the magic number that makes this into a perfect square inside the parentheses? You take half the coefficient of x, square it, you get 1. So you add 1 inside the parentheses. However, notice See this negative 2 out here? You really subtracted 2 when you, when you did that. So you have to counterbalance that. So you have to add 2 out here, so you don't change the function. Now that this is a perfect square, it becomes negative 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 5. And once it's written in this form, you can identify the ver vertex pretty easily. The vertex becomes the point um, negative 1, 5. OK, let, let's, let's, find the, uh, let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the value of y when x is 0. So if you go back to the function and plug in 0, you should get 3. The x-intercepts, if you solve this equation equaling 0, you'd set y equal to 0. Um, you're go you, what you would do is you would subtract 5, divide by negative 2, and that becomes positive 5 halves, equals x plus 1 squared. Take the square root, don't forget plus or minus. Then, then let's, let's rationalize the denominator. Um, uh, over here, uh, you multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. So this is where we're at. This becomes square root of 10 over 2, plus or minus. And then, then you would sub, subtract 1 at the end. And the last, the very, very last step would be to get the LCD, which, oh, which is 2. So your final answer is the x-intercepts, there's two of them, are at negative 2, plus or minus square root of 10 over 2. So the graph would look kind of like this. All right. Uh, we're just going to focus on the vertex for now. See if you can take this quadratic function here and see if you can um, write it in this form and find the vertex. See if you can do that. Okay, the first step is to factor out the coefficient of x squared, right? Which is negative 1. And then remember, to complete the square inside the parentheses, you should have added 9. Uh, but what did you really do? See this minus out here? You really subtracted 9, so you have to add 9 on the outside. So anyway, it turns into this. This is what you get when, when you complete when you write it as a perfect square. So where is where's the vertex? The vertex is at three comma four. All right, here's something that's kind of nice. We did this. We'll do this in class, and this is done in your book. How would you do that um, for a general quadratic function? How how would you write it in in uh, in in this form here? How how would you do that? Well, it turns out you would complete the square. You do the same process. It just is kind of messy. So see if you can bear with me here. If you wanted to write this as a 
in, in that tra transformation form, you would factor out the coefficient of x squared, which is a. Notice this becomes b over a over here. If you don't see that, go ahead and multiply this back through. You'll see that it works. Then you complete the square inside the parentheses. And the magic number, you take half of b over a, which is b over 2a, and then square it. Isn't that what you get? b squared over 4a squared. But you see, that's not really what you added because there's an a out here. When you multiply back through, one of the a's cancel. So what you really added was b squared over 4a. So you have to subtract it also. Anyway, we're almost done. So you can take a general quadratic function and write it like, like this. You've completed the square. So by the way, uh, so the vertex will be negative b over 2a because this is a plus, And this is your vertical shift, c minus b squared over 4a. However, it turns out you don't even need to, to re remember this, because if you know the x-coordinate of the vertex, you can always find the y-coordinate by just plugging that x-coordinate into the fun function. Isn't that true? So, for example, what I'm saying here is you don't really have, if all you want to do is find the vertex, you don't really have to go through all that mess anymore. All you have to do is identify a, b, and c, and for, um, for the x-coordinate of the vertex, you would compute negative b over 2a. In this case, in this case, uh, negative b over 2a becomes negative 4 over 2 times negative 2, which is just 1. And the y coordinate of the vertex, you just plug that value 1 back into your function. Your function is right here. So f of 1 becomes negative 2 times 1 plus 4 times 1 plus 5, which is 7. So the vertex is the point 1 comma 7. Pretty nice, huh? All right, well, well a couple more things here. Uh, in, in summary, this is what we've done in this video. This is what you, you need to know for the next... Uh, next video we're going to do. When you have a quadratic function, uh, the vertex can be found by looking at negative b over 2a, that'll be the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate of the vertex, you could either compute c minus b squared over 4a, or some, some of you would find it easier just to plug that x-coordinate into the function to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. It opens up if a is greater than 0, opens down if a is less than 0. That makes sense, because that's, that's your vertical stretch and it also could be your reflection across the x-axis. They'll always have a y-intercept because um, the domain of, of quadratic functions is all real, real numbers, so the y-intercept will always be f of 0. And it may or may not have x-intercepts. The way you find the x-intercept is to solve the quadratic equation equal, equaling 0. If you were to solve this with a quadratic formula and get uh, non-real roots, that, that would indicate that the quadratic function doesn't have any x-intercepts. So anyway, a quadratic function can either have two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or no x-intercepts. By the way, if it has one x-intercept, that would have to be the vertex, wouldn't it? Anyway, so one, one last thing. Uh, this is going to help for the next uh, video. What if you wanted to find the x-intercepts of this qu quadratic function? Before you jump to the quadratic formula, you should try to factor. You, you, you would set y equal to 0, and if you factor it, you would uh, you'd get this. So what you, end up, what you end up with is the x-intercepts are at 5 and negative 1. All right, so, so graphically what that means is the graph crosses the x-axis at negative 1, 0, and at 5, 0. So when, when, when it's factored like this, you can find the x-intercepts easily, can't you? Uh, so, how about this? Can, can you think of a quadratic function that has x-intercepts at negative 2 and 5? If you're given the x if those are the x-intercepts, what would the function be? Well, if, if negative 2 is a um, x-intercept, then wouldn't x plus 2 have to be a factor? And if 5 is an x-intercept, wouldn't x minus 5 have to be a factor? So, if, if you know the x-intercepts, you can factor it. Now it turns out there's, there's infinitely many quadratic functions that have these two x-intercepts. In other words, could, couldn't you put a 3 in front of this? And that would be a different quad, quadratic function. So, so in, in, in general, uh, any quadratic function of the form a times quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 5, where a is not 0, this would be a any quad, quad, quadratic function of this form would have those two x-intercepts. That's really important for next uh, video. Uh-oh, gotta go. Bye-bye.